Now I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Ian Boziak. He's going to tell you all about eFuture um, readers. I'm sure his presentation is very educational and entertaining. Okay. Well, uh, uh, again, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming and, and you know, sharing uh, this space and, and hopefully your expertise. Have you guys all met somebody new today? Yes. Yes? Excellent. Well, what I want you guys to do right now is take one minute or two minutes, find somebody new, okay? I want you to find somebody new and ask their name, about their teaching experience, what was the hardest class you ever taught? And what made it so hard? What did you do about it? And why you teach English and something else, okay? So, find somebody new, all right? Are you guys ready? Will you speak with a friend? Huh? No. Will you find somebody new? Are you ready? Are you set? Go! All right, guys, very good. Did anybody meet anybody really interesting today? Yeah? Awesome. So now you have somebody to go to dinner with, right? No? Well, of course, <clears throat> the reason why I want you to do this is to help you expand your professional network, right? We've been talking about extensive reading today. But maybe, you know, you've got a problem with a class that you need a solution to. Maybe you want some teaching tips, some ideas. You can now contact your new friend for those ideas, all right? Okay, great. So uh, we're going to talk more about what you can do with graded readers, okay? So let's uh, define a couple of terms here. Um, a graded reader, these are these leveled readers that you have. Maybe you have this one in your pack, yeah? All right, so these books are specifically designed, uh, as uh, Rob said, for English language learners. We control grammar and the vocabulary and lots of different other things uh, for them, okay? Uh, extensive reading. Again, we've been talking about this before, but it's simply an approach to reading, and it's, it's you know, uh, complex, of course. I've, I've made it very simple here. And intensive reading. So I think you guys are familiar with those two terms. But what I want to start off with these questions, okay? So number one, do you currently use graded readers in your class? How do you use them, all right? Um, do you have access to a library with, with graded readers? And do you yourself read extensively? Do your students read extensively? Take a few minutes and talk with somebody around you and answer these and, and share your ideas, okay? You guys ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay, excellent guys. Would anybody like to share? Would anybody like to share some of their uh, thoughts and how you use graded readers, if you use them? Any thoughts you'd like to share on these, on these questions? Anyone? Don't be shy, just try. Anybody? Okay, on the count of three, somebody will raise their hand and say, pick me. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> any, any one of them. Any one of them, yes. Uh, do I read extensively? No, I don't. <laughs> I'd love to. I just don't have time. Uh, I think my reading ability in English is pretty good. <laughs> So I don't need to practice, yes. I, I, I'm in Japan, but um, I'm trying to learn the Japanese language, which, as you know, is, is, is quite difficult, yeah? The problem I have is it's very hard to find graded readers in Japanese for the learning of Japanese. And I guess the same in Korean yes. for people like Ian and, uh, and, and Patrick who uh, want you to learn, yeah? So if you want to make some money... <laughs> Write some graded readers for the learners of Korean. Please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, definitely agree. Anybody else? In the back. No? Well, it's, it's really great that you guys had a lot of ideas and were sharing together. Um, 
basically I want to actually help you sort of think about what you guys do in your own lives, right? Because if, say, for example, we're not reading extensively ourselves, then is it, uh, can we really expect our students to, right? Teachers often lead by example. Um, so don't be afraid to share with your students exactly what you're reading. And maybe you're not reading very extensively, but maybe you've got a book on the go and you can share that with your students, right? Okay, before we continue, uh, I want you to do one thing. Uh, in your book here, in this book, all right, I want you to take one of the graded readers that you have, go to page 38, and cover the bottom of 38, okay? Go to page 38 and cover the bottom. Oh, page 39, sorry, page 39. Just stick your graded reader in there, okay? Sort of like this. Okay? We'll, do, we'll use this later. Just cover up the bottom panel, all right? Okay. So, uh, again, page 39, sorry, page 39, 39, 39. So today I'm going to talk to you about a lot of different things, a lot of different ideas, okay? Uh, but I want you to remember that these are only options, okay? They're not prescriptions. Every classroom is different. Wouldn't you agree? So what I want you guys to do and uh, what I hope you take away from this are simply different options. You might see something here that you think you can import into your classroom, but you might and you probably will have to change them. So please do uh, adapt these activities or these ideas to fit your particular classroom, your students, uh, or your you know, particular uh, access to resources or whatever, okay? Um, but before we get into the activities, I want to go through some of the readers that we have uh, for you and some of the readers that you have samples of, okay? So we do have these Phonics Fun readers. I don't think you got a sample of this, but we do have samples outside. And basically, these are a set of Phonics readers. There are 25 of them, they're super colorful, and they're all written with some kind of phonics target. For example, uh, ABC or short vowels, long vowels, blends, all kinds of different things. So if your students are working on phonics, using a phonics reader is a really great way to help your students consolidate their skills. But not only that, it's a great way to help your students realize that there is utility in doing a phonics course or learning English in general, right? If they study in phonics class and you give them a phonics reader and all of a sudden they're able to read do you know the, the magic in that? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a story. Uh, many years ago, about 10 years ago, I moved to Germany to, to study German. And at the time, I just wanted to go back to Germany. I liked Germany, and German was my best second language. And uh, I enrolled in a school, but they didn't have an extensive reading program. I knew that reading was really important, and there was one magazine that was designed specifically for German language students, okay? There are very few graded readers, and there are still very few graded readers. Another business opportunity. Uh, but what I do, I started reading the newspaper, and I picked one of the easiest, well, one of the easiest that I could find, had lots of pictures, but the problem was it had a lot of slang, actually, right? So I actually turned to a uh, more a uh, regular mainstream newspaper, and it was easier to read because it had, you know, regular or more regular language than the, the tabloid style. Anyway, I remember reading every day. Every day I read and I struggled. It was hard. It was really hard, as you, as you mentioned, right? I knew under 90%. But as I went through the course, because there was a, a lack of, of reading materials, I thought, okay, I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to go to the kids section and read kids books because that's the, the next best thing. Start with picture books, one word on each page. So I went to the library, got a library card. I went to the kids department and the lady looked at me. <laughs> what are you doing here? And I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm trying to learn German. This is all I can find. And she said, no, no, there's a German you know, language area. And she takes me over there and it's just grammar books and reading comprehension. I said, no. I want to read kids' books. 
And I said, just take me to the, the easiest kid's book you have. And she, she just was not having it. She didn't want me there. She thought it was some kind of creep. I don't know. But it was really hard to convince her, right? So that didn't really work out. And I, I went back to just reading the newspaper. And again, I studied, studied and studied. I did lots of vocabulary, you know, lots of rote learning, lots of this. And then one day, I got the newspaper in the morning. I was drinking some tea. And I remember I read an article. I didn't look up any words. I just knew it. I could understand it. And look at this. Today, I still get goosebumps <laughs> thinking about this experience. That's how powerful this experience was. So think about this. If you put a book in front of your students that they're actually able to read and understand, that is amazing. That is an amazing power, right? And that's why graded readers are so effective at this. Because it gives, that student, gives students that sense of accomplishment. That yes, what I've been working on all these years is actually meaningful. It pays off. It's real. I can do something with this. right? And I guarantee you that's something that I've never forgotten and will never forget. And I'm, I'm almost certain that your students, if given that opportunity, will have that same feeling too. And that's, I think, the biggest, I guess, sales point of, of introducing a graded reader or, or graded reading materials in your class, OK? So I do encourage you to do that. All right, moving on. The uh, classic readers, you have one of these, and it's, it's on page 38 of your book now. Um, but this is a set of classics tales. Um, it starts from very low level to very high level. We've got a really good gradient, and we'll show you how that works. And then our two comic, we have three comic book series. And these are really great. We're going to talk about how you can actually use comic books in your class. But these are a great resource for not only just extensive reading, but extending reading or extending some kind of activity in your class. Okay? And they are award winning. So we're really happy about that. All right? So uh, these are our classic readers. We've got 12 levels. Um, they go from the common European framework, A1, up to C1. So we do cover quite a range of, of ability levels. We've got downloaded, downloadable audio and supporting activities. Some of them even have a video and audio, so do check that out. If you have any questions about them, please do ask our staff uh, in the lobby at break time. Uh, this is actually how the reading system goes, or the reading library goes, right? We start down here at the phonics level, and you can see here the head word count. So basically, we build up slowly and steadily, right? So we do want and encourage students to start at the easiest level, and when they're ready, move forward and move on, OK? Right. So there's a lots of uh, benefits to extensive reading, and we've touched on a lot of these. Research suggests that you know, students could have better uh, competence in, in, in language itself. Lots of different uh, language skills are involved. Of course, vocabulary and spelling and grammar. Um, but also this, this increase in positive affect, right? The students are feeling good about themselves, good about their learning ability, right? And that comes with finding success in reading, right? And this positive attitude towards uh, learning a second language or English in general, right? Think of how many students think, oh, English, oh, no, not English, boring, <laughs> right? Why is it boring? Are you just, you know, studying, whatever that means, concentrating on filling out books? Are you actually providing materials for students that are meaningful, but also that they can feel success and feel good about themselves, right? And that's the power of using extensive readers in your classroom. OK, um, again, there's lots of different ways to understand what uh, extensive reading is and how you could do it. This is one of them, these quote unquote 10 principles. Um, uh, and these are definitely abridged, but we'll just go through them very quickly because I think Rob touched on a lot of these things. Um, but students really read a wide variety of books. Uh, you guys have talked about how to accumulate books and, and develop uh, a, a library. Sometimes, and a lot of times, the students select the material themselves, but not always. 
Um, there are sometimes no or very few follow-up activities. Um, again, books are easy to read and understand. They're read at the student's pace, right? But hopefully to the quicker side. Uh, students read faster since the material is easy, of course. And the teacher could be a role model and guides and encourages students through the program, right? This is just one way of understanding how uh, an extensive reading program could, could happen, right? So why should we use graded readers? Well, they're really a really fantastic resource, not only for use in an extensive reading program, but also just in your, in your school in general, right? They do promote this positive affect, which we talked about, that reading cycle. Um, they provide lots of ways to extend and expand lessons, and I'm going to show you some activities uh, to do that. And they're useful with differentiated learning, right? Let's say you have a really big mixed ability class, and you have access to a range of, of mixed ability readers, right? Students can read something at their level, right? And you can have maybe common activities or different activities for each of the students. Sometimes, a lot of the times, the texts are short, right? And they're achievable, and they promote this positive reading cycle. So let's take a look. We touched on this earlier, right? Students begin reading. They're interested in the story. They understand the content. They understand the vocabulary, the language, the grammar. They, they feel confident, right? And they have this positive association with reading. Right? A lot of times our students have this negative association with reading because what they're reading is way too hard, right? So why not give them that opportunity to have that really positive uh, reading experience? And again, it just goes around and around, right? Of course, we like to do things that we're good at, right? We don't like to do things that we're not good at. Okay. So that's the introduction. Let's take a look at different activities that you can do with graded readers, all right? So we're going to talk about, very quickly, your classroom library, extensive reading program, although we've talked about that uh, already. Uh, extended reading class, we're going to talk more about that. Extending and expanding on other skill areas, we've got a couple of activities for that. And then integrated language skills, and then CLIL, that's content language integrated learning. Uh, lessons and activities, okay? So I'm just going to quickly touch on that, your classroom ER uh, program. Again, there's so much to talk about. You could probably, uh, there's lots of books and, and perhaps some other opportunities to learn. Of course, you can learn more at the Extensive Reading Foundation website, uh, which is erfoundation.org, right? Yeah. So basically, you need to get some graded readers. Lead by example. Create a space in a borrowing system, right? Um, help your students be accountable for themselves, and we talked about that already. And create time, perhaps, where students can share what they're reading, right? I used to, when I was teaching, I used to every Friday, even though we didn't have an extensive reading program, I invited uh, students to share what they were reading with the class every Friday, right? We would take five minutes, and kids would bring in their books. Not everybody, maybe they would, you know, talk maybe once every three or four weeks. But everybody got a chance to say, hey, I'm reading this book. It's really good because of this. And I think you should read it because this might happen, right? And after a while, the kids started selling these books to the other kids in the class, which was really fun, right? Even though we didn't have an ER program, we did have access to a library. So we did, I did carve out a space for students to share what they were learning or reading, sorry. Um, but you could also, you know, have an extended uh, reading class or a reading club. Maybe this is something you could do in the winter or the summer session, right? Um, if you have time for a special class, right? So, for example, you could have a book club, right? Where the students might be reading all of the same books. So, in this iteration, students might not be picking the books themselves, but maybe they actually vote on a book that they want to read together, right? Um, you could have discussion-based uh, comprehension checks rather than traditional, you know, multiple choice or a test, right? You could actually talk about what's happening in the book like we would talk about the book if we were reading, you know, together as we do. 
Have students do more creative projects, of course, based on what they're reading, right? Making art or uh, making some kind of uh, other iteration of the content or the book, a screenplay, a video, a podcast, any number of these things that, that could be done based on what we're reading. Uh, you know, each group might perform a short play, re record and share with their parents if that's possible or if it's allowed, right? So let's take a look here. This is a dramati dramatization. Um, definitely you could do this. What we have in the back of our, our graded reader here, um, this one for example, in, in the back of some of these, in the lower levels, you have a, a little playlet, right? That's already there. So you could read the book, you could read the story, and perform the play, right? Students might read different stories, for example, in small groups. Uh, after reading the book, have your students rewrite the story in a play. They could, uh, you know, be creative. Maybe they want to change the plot line a little bit. Uh, maybe they want to keep it traditional. Maybe they want to put it in a different time. Maybe 200 years ago or in the Joseon time. Or maybe they want to make it in the future but keep the same story, right? Um, have each group perform the short play, right? And then share it. You could also have the students write out the screenplay and make a, another graded reader and put that back into your extensive reading library, right? So here's uh, an example that we have. This is the Golden Goose. I think you have something else. But again, in the back, we do create a little playlet. So you can see how we've adapted the story into uh, uh, a screenplay or, or dramatization. All right. This is a, another reading series that we have, Art Classic Stories. They're outside if you want to take a look. It's a, it's a collection of uh, nursery rhyme readers, kind of. Um, but they're on classic tales, so all of these classic tales are, are told in rhyme, which is really unique. And all the artwork is in the art style of a well-known artist, right? And so this is uh, in a classroom in uh, Vietnam, actually. And what they did is the English teacher worked with the art teacher and the drama teacher. And they got together and they decided they were going to read The Three Little Pigs, and in the drama class, they created a, a, like a play script. And then in art class, they made artwork. And then they made all of the sets for a play. And it was amazing just to see some of the artwork and the creativity that some of these students were, were creating. It was just amazing. It was so cool to see. And then, of course, they, they got the whole school together. The class performed the play in front of the school, in front of the parents, and they had a really great, great time. So this is a great way to extend and you know, work together with your colleagues that might be teaching um, different subject areas, right? Uh, another uh, great activity here, sorry, is uh, prediction or using illustrations, all right? Uh, for this activity, I need four volunteers. Who wants to come up and try? Don't be shy. Just try. Who wants to try? Come on, guys. Four volunteers. I have an amazing prize for the winner. Yes, thank you. Come on down. Yes, two, three, four. Thank you, guys. Come on down. All right. So, yeah. Come on down. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with some of the images from the book, OK? So we need two groups of two, all right? So put yourself in a group. Put yourselves in a group. OK, so pick one. There you go. There you go. OK, so on the right side, with the blue marker, we have team blue. 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 <laughs> OK. Usually my students say, like, winner, we're the best, we're the prettiest. And on the left side, with the black marker, we have team? Winner! Whoa! Team blue, team winner, okay. <laughs> team blue, please stand on this side of the table. Team winner, please stand on this side of the table. All right? So you guys have a piece of paper in front of you, okay? 
And you get to choose one of these, the, this or this. Penguin. What is it? Penguin. Penguin, okay. And what is this guy? Dinosaur. Dinosaur, great. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to do this, all right? So I'm going to scan the first illustrations of a cover, remove the words, right? For example, we could work with a book like this, or we could work with a book like this, a comic book. And that's what we're going to do right now, OK? So I'm going to have the students create a story based on the illustrations and then present their stories, right? This is one option, right? Then read the words and compare. How were the two texts similar and different? Why were they different, OK? So I want you guys to do this as well. So we're going to look at this, but before we do, I want you guys to look. Here's one example of what you could do. Look, write 10 words from the picture. When you're finished, OK? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Will you work together? Will you look at the picture? Will you write 12 words? Very good. When you're finished, what do you do? Are you ready? Are you set? Go. OK, very good. Stop. There you go. All right, so what I want to do is let's, let's do some feedback, OK? Give me three words, OK? I want you to listen, look, and check. Do you have this word? Ready? Okay, give me two new words. I want you guys to listen and check. Mirror. Mirror. Couch. 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 Oh. Couch. Okay, great. And so on and so on and so on, right? There's lots of different ways to do feedback on this. You could have your students listen. If there's a new word, you could write it on your new vocabulary list. You could do it on the board together. There's so many different ways that you could do this, okay? So, give them a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Come and see me for your prize after, okay? Sorry, I, did, I didn't bring any. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is just one way to elicit some vocabulary, right? To help your students gather a, a lexus of words that they might need um, to access um, or you could find out exactly what your students know and what they don't know. Let's say you're reading a book together in your class and you think, oh, maybe, maybe most of the students knew all of the words, but you're not sure. This is kind of like a test, right? But it's a fun test and it gives you information and it could also help others teach others words, right? But another, of course, example of this is here. I've taken a story and I've just deleted the words, right? So you could say, all right, guys, what I want you to do, look at all these pictures, OK? I'm going to scroll through these and I'm going to give you guys maybe one minute for each picture. And I want you guys to discuss what's happening in the picture, OK? Um, so we've got this. And then we could go through here. OK, now what's happening in this picture, right? What do you see? What's happening in this picture? Who is there? What do you see? What are they doing, right? And your students can write them down into groups. And then, of course, you could say, all right, what is the story? What's happening? Tell me the story. The students can actually write out the story. Maybe the students know the story, right? And they're, they're thinking in their mind, oh, I know the story, the princess and the pea. What's going on? Who's saying what? They could write a dialogue. You could also maybe find pictures um, even on the internet and help students create a story and on the bottom you could leave lines or blank spaces for students actually to write in the story and create their own little graded reader, right? And then after that you could bring out the actual real graded reader and say, okay guys, let's read this together, right? Uh, how does this compare with the story that you created? What's similar? What's different? Um, why are there similarities? Why are there differences? Right? So it's just a really great, fun way to help students interact in a different way with graded readers. 
All right. OK, so let's look at the next activity. Um, this is prediction using illustrations, of course. We're going to be using a comic reader, OK? So this is where I want you to cover up the bottom. No peeking, no cheating. So cover up the bottom panel that has the answers. Spoiler alert, all right? OK, what I want you to do, I want you to look at the first page. I want you guys to, with a partner, write out the words, OK? I want you to distribute and have your students uh, use the picture clues to put in their own text. Have the students perform the texts and the class votes on the best one, the most interesting, the most original, I don't know. And then read the original text and compare, discuss the differences, okay? Are you guys ready? I want you to actually do this. I'm going to give you two minutes to write this out. Please don't cheat. That's cheating. And then we're going to see, we're going to invite somebody to perform their, their dialogues, okay? So here it is. Take a minute, have a look, write it down with a partner. Ready, set, go. Okay, time is up. Who would like to perform their dialogue? Don't be shy, guys. Don't make me pick somebody. <laughs> Who wants to try for an amazing prize that they'll collect later? <laughs> um, well, I will, sh no, you know, you should be doing this. Okay, good, do you guys want to try? Excellent, woo! Doesn't matter. Okay. It's not a good, the problem. English problem. It's Doesn't good. matter. Yes. I, all right, um, you can be as creative as you want, all right? Now remember, you need to perform. Here we go. Peter, wake up. That's the first one. Peter, wake up. And uh, the girl says, the second one, I told you so. She's the sister of him. Okay. And the mom says, it's okay, honey. <laughs> Am I doing all right? And then, um, <laughs> Okay, what's that? And then, bye mom, have a nice day. And what's going on? What's going on? Okay. I, we don't go there, there yet. We'll go there. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, sorry, I'm not creative enough. I'm okay, sorry. sorry, I'm not creative enough. <laughs> Next. I know that. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. And what time is it? I, I, I'm not late. It's not nine yeah. o'clock yet, and the kids, class time. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it my sit? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Great! Thank you very much. Awesome. Very good. Okay, that was awesome, right? Now you can reveal the answers. Well, they're not the answers. They're just an alternative, right? What is so great about this activity? <clears throat> is that actually students grade this themselves, right? They call upon the language that they already have to complete the dialogue. It might be the same, it might be similar, it might be totally different, right? But it's a really great way to help students introduce and get into the story because they're already invested, right? They've already looked at the story and probably, I guess probably, a lot of the dialogue is very similar, right? Because there's not a lot of choice, right? You could say, Jack, it's time for school. You could say, get up, you're late for school, or hurry up, let's go. All of these things sort of mean the same thing, right? So it's, we're, we're helping students understand there's multiple ways of saying the same thing, right? So this is just a great way, something I hope that you can try in your classroom with a comic reader, all right? Any questions on this? No? All right. Is this something you can try? Will you try? Excellent. All right. Um, so there's lots of other things that you can do, right? Expanding on a theme that you present in your class, OK? So you might choose a theme from the course book that you're working with um, and expand with a graded reader. So find a graded reader that matches the theme, and you could read that together, right? Um, or not, you know, right? 
provide students a chance to use the language that they're learning in class to, to read something meaningful. And this goes again, it ties into those, those phonics fun readers that I was talking about for the lowest level kids. So there's always something for every student at each level, right? Even if it's just a book with a picture and one word, right? So let's take a look at this. This is uh, from our new course book, Hand in Hand. I think you guys have a sample of that as well, right, from here. Um, so do check that out, it's very nice. So this unit is on being sick, oh, and the students are going and they're learning all the language about being sick and talking about an illness, right? Um, what's the matter, I've got a cold, I've got this, I've got that, I've got the stomach ache, right? And they do, they can sort of read a little bit here um, and then they can talk about this, right? I have a cold. And then you can find this book, right? I think you have a sample of this book. It's called Tummy Trouble. This is from our, our comic book series, right? And here, it's all about stomach problems. And this is a science reader. So it actually gives you a story, and it also gives you some science around certain things. Of course, it's age appropriate. So we've got the fun little story, and then we've got these pullouts about, you know, what is a stomach ache exactly? What's going on in there? Right? So graded readers aren't um, only for reading in the library. Bring them into your classroom. And again, this helps tie something uh, fun, reading a book, and something that maybe perceptively is not fun, i.e. working in uh, a course book or something hard, whatever. Right? It's just a really great way to help students expand and use the language that they're learning in your class. So not only will the reading the book be fun, but also they'll, look, they'll come to understand and come to realize that actually working with your textbook is a lot of fun too because what they're learning is meaningful, it's real, it's useful. Right? Okay. Uh, there's lots of other things you can do. Projects, integrated skill projects, right? You can uh, uh, you know, use graded readers to do discussions uh, with a variety of contemporary topics. You might choose to use a below grade reader as a jumping off point in a lesson to discuss uh, other themes or larger themes, right? Um, for example, using graded readers with adults. Uh, a lot of the graded readers, well now, uh, there's a huge selection of graded readers. But, you know, maybe you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours in class or having your students read a graded reader, but maybe, let's say you're working with adults and you want to actually use a book like this, something adults can read very quickly, right? Uh, for example, The Princess and the Pea. You know, what is the author really trying to say? Is there an allegory here? Is there a metaphor? What's, what is the story actually about, right? Um, for example, how gender roles or standards changed throughout history, right? Um, how would it or could it be rewritten for today? Um, have students rewrite and create a story but using maybe contemporary uh, characters or situations, right? Publish the stories for other students. So if you're working at a university, maybe the university also has a kids program and your adults can actually create a book, a graded reader for the, the, the guys in the kids program. Maybe they need access to more books, right? It's a great exercise in, in uh, integrating all the different language skills, okay? Um, content language integrated learning is another area that uh, graded readers are really great uh, for using, right? So they're a really great source of content area information. Right? We can find information on all kinds of different ideas that you might be covering in your subject area classes. Uh, for example, you could delve into the history or the geography of a certain title. Maybe it's a classic story. Maybe it's uh, um, a factual story. It doesn't much matter. Explore literature and literary traditions, right? Well, you could be talking about fairy tales and you could source a bunch of fairy tales uh, from a graded reader library. You could probably read them quickly um, if they're easy or maybe they're more difficult and it could be for an extended project. Uh, you could, of course, investigate the science and the mathematics behind certain stories, something like that. Uh, for example, here, you know, match a graded reader with the content that you're working with. There's 
uh, I think Rob said there's 4,000 different readers that are available in, in Korea right now, right? Another great way is, is paired fiction and nonfiction, right? So you might be reading, um, for example, The Princess and the Pea, and you could tie that with a book on royalty, right? A nonfiction reader. Um, you could have your students investigate and go online and, and source material and bring it to class. There's all kinds of things you could do, right? You could, uh, of course, explore the content from different perspectives. One of the most interesting uh, classes I ever took, I studied history in my undergraduate uh, degree, and one class, it was an interdisciplinary class. And so that meant we were talking about European history from, you know, in the 1800s or something like that, but it had students from the history faculty, from the science, from architecture, from medicine, and it was so interesting because every student brought their own perspective in the time, right? I remember we were talking about a certain town. There was this uh, conflict or a war in Europe. And one of the, the architecture students said, yeah, this, in the town there's this, there's this monument and it looks like this. And it's meaningful in these ways. And the you know, medical student might say, well, you know, back in the day the hospitals were like this. And, and it was just a, a really interesting discussion because we got to talk about the same thing from all kinds of different perspectives. And that's where a graded reader can really bring people together in, and, and feed off of their own uh, you know, specialties or their own areas of interest, right? They could delve into the content in a different way, in a way that they choose or, or something they, they want to explore more of. So for example, uh, you could explore content areas. How do we do that? Try matching a fairy tale with history or geography, for example, let's say you're studying um, the UK or, or you know, somewhere in Asia or Africa, right? I'm sure there's a graded reader that comes from that area or has to do or is connected in some way with that topic, right? How does the story help explain the period of time that we're studying if we're studying history? Which elements of the story are true to the time? which are not, which are embellished, right? Um, people, for example, have been fascinated with Sir Arthur and, and, the, and you know, or, or some kind of fictional character for many years. Why? What about that character is so compelling then and is so compelling now? Why are we still interested in this story? What's going on here, right? So for example here, Jack and the Giant Killer, right? Um, this is by a guy named Andrew Lang. He was actually a lawyer from Scotland. So why? Why is this lawyer from Scotland creating these stories? What's going on here? Is there another story on top of this that we could extract or do something with, right? Could be a really great way to really expand our understandings of classic stories, for example. This is particularly well suited for university students or adults, things like that, right? But there could be other opportunities for working with, with kids as well, okay? So guess what I want to say? There's lots of different things that you could do with graded readers. Um, in addition to starting and, and working with a graded readers program, this is also perhaps a really great way to introduce graded readers into your classroom and then to help launch a graded reading or, a, or an extensive reading program. You bring in the materials first and maybe you're using them in a more traditional way and then you say, okay, well we got all these graded readers, why don't we make a, an extensive reading program, right? So there's lots of ways that you can approach this, okay? Any questions so far? Comments? Concerns? No? Okay. Um, well, of course, you might have uh, more time than you think to use graded readers, okay? Um, I might say, I might suggest you could focus your class time on things that you can only do in class. And if you want, if there's homework, you could have your students do that outside of class, right? The sort of busy work, if you will. Um, you know, of course, you could be a role model. You could share your 
um, struggles with reading and your solutions for reading, right? You could share what you're reading with your class and, and really make it socially acceptable in your circle to pick up a graded reader, right? In, in some cases, maybe you're in a school that doesn't have graded readers but has kids' books, for example. Or maybe you're in a school where adults don't feel comfortable reading graded readers because they feel it's dumbed down or whatever. But you can actually create a community where it's acceptable and encouraged to use these types of reading material. And you could say yourself, this is what I'm reading, right? It's really great because of this, but don't spoil it, right? You could sell the different books in your class. And show students, uh, of course, that readers can be used in so many different ways, that it's meaningful and it's fun. Um, and it can really help your students feel that sense of achievement and, and utility for what they're actually doing, all right? OK, so before we end, I want to ask you a few questions, all right? Did you guys ask and answer questions with your friend or your new p uh, partner? Yeah? Did you get some helpful tips? Yeah? Is there something you can try in your classroom next week, next month, next year? All right, well, thank you guys for your time. I do encourage you to check out the readers outside and uh, have a wonderful afternoon and look forward to hearing Patrick talk about what's happening down in Jeju. <laughs> Thanks very much.